Hey, Daz here from DC Customs and welcome back to the channel. Behind me is one of our biggest builds to date. Um, finished this about two years ago, it's back with us uh, just for a couple of days for a little bit of service work. So it's a perfect opportunity for us to refilm this uh, and show you guys exactly what it takes to build a Flying Spur Bentley pickup. Right, so from the very start, about three years ago, the owner of this car contacted us, um, asked us if we'd be interested in building a Bentley Flying Spur pickup truck. Now, Bentley never made a pickup truck, um, so this is a one of one, only one in the world, uh, Bentley Flying Spur pickup. Um, he went out, uh, bought a 2005, one owner from new, full service history, perfect Bentley Flying Spur, long wheelbase, W12 twin turbo engine, awesome car um, for us to chop up and build into this pickup truck, which has been a dream for years. Um, I did a few concept sketches, um, trying to keep the lines of the car exactly as Bentley would have designed it if they had have ever uh, wanted to build it into a pickup truck. Um, so starting from the back, um, first thing for us to do was strip all the interior out of this car uh, and all the exterior. So all the bumpers came off, all the glass off, uh, all the interiors out, all the carpets, headliner, everything stripped out. All the wiring from the back was all moved to the front, trying to keep everything as much as possible intact as we could so we didn't disturb anything because there's a lot of electrics going on with these new cars. Um, which was one of the major worries before we even started getting into this. Um, and some of the hurdles along the way that we had to overcome as well. Um, so once all that was done, first thing we had to do was remove the bulkhead, which sat around there behind the rear seat because this used to be a four door car. Bulkhead was removed. Uh, then the next thing which dictated how much material or metal we could remove and bring the bulkhead as far back as possible um was the sunroof now the sunroof used to slide to about here so we had to cut all the frame down move all that move all the motor as far forward as we possibly could because we still wanted to retain the sunroof just to flip up um, so we've got just enough room there for the motor which dictated where we could make our first cut lines were drawn until we were happy with the shape cut that out cut all the back off welded the door up Right, so one of the first things we had to do was brace the car, of course, before any metal um, or, or the roof was, uh, the bulkhead was all chopped out. Everything was completely um, braced with steel, thick tubing, so there was no movement to the body at all. Rear doors were all welded up, prepped, welded, seam sealed, um, which also gives us a load more rigidity in the car, because of course, when you're chopping the back off, that was again, one of the main worries that we got there. Next thing to do was to basically make it look like my drawing. Um, so the side silhouette um, was drawn out. So starting from the bottom of the rear window, basically just drew a line in the center of the car, right front to back, to get the height that we wanted, what looked correct. Um, and basically just made our first cut front to back, removed all the C posts, um, those are the original seat posts, um, believe it or not, which used to sit about here. Moved all that forward, twisted it slightly, added a few little sections to it as well, um, which gave us the shape of the rear quarter window as well. So one thing always affects another, so you've got to pre-think all the different stages in advance, which is a bit of a headache, but the main thing was this, it had to look correct first off, and then everything had to fit around that. Um, one of our first problems that we had was we knew this straight away the strut top at the back was always going to sit about two inches higher than we wanted the body line had to sit there for the car to look correct the strut top sat about there originally so the only thing that we could do because the car's got air suspension as standard we didn't want to take that out because then again you've got warning lights on the dashboard and that was drop the suspension in the car now it dropped it about uh, one and three quarter inches. Um, so we had to basically cut the strut top off, move all that down, 
and have made a new bottom A-arm with a kink in it for the suspension. So all the suspension keeps the standard Bentley geometry. Right, so coming into the back, one of the things that dictated how much space we would have in the back bed were the strut towers. Now, by this point, we'd already lowered them, but the width, we couldn't change that at all. So a framework was made to make a nice straight parallel bed in the back, which houses the standard batteries either side and also the strut tops as well. Um, once that framework was made, all the back uh, bulkhead, that's all been custom made. Also the rear window aperture, that has also been custom made from scratch. All that is complete steel welded in uh, on top of the framework here as well, all covered in sheet steel, um, all fully welded. Everything is tacked in place until everything is perfect, millimeter perfect, gapped up the lot before everything is fully welded in place. Right, we're trying to keep everything as standard and Bentley as possible. We need to retain the original ta tailgate. We also needed it to drop down just like a proper conventional pickup truck. Now, this is the lower section of the original tailgate, which would have gone that way. That was all chopped off, which left a hollow section there. That was all fully welded up. Uh, bear claw latches attached to either side. Catches on the inside there. Everything's custom made. All controlled by the standard Bentley button. All gapped up perfectly. Uh, all around the framework as well, which sits underneath this wood, which brings me onto the wood. Um, this was all made by a yacht builder from down south. He's done an absolutely awesome job. Um, the, uh, the templates were made. This was a huge job actually for him. The car actually went down to into a couple of months once all the filler work and the car was into primer and we knew exactly where everything was fitting. All the bulkhead was done by this point. Um, templates were made of this woodwork. Um, all this was made and a fiberglass shell was made for the inside of this. Just in case any water does get underneath this wood, it's not gonna get into the car at all and rot anything out. So fiberglass shell was made fiberglass backs to all of these cabinets were made as well um, covered in this yacht wood um, all that was brought back up to us um, three stages of uh, matte lacquer were applied so about nine coats of lacquer in total to seal the wood fully flatted back and ceramic coated now one of the windows on this look really simple now they made a lot of work went into these windows especially the rear quarters it's not exactly as we'd planned, but that's the thing with custom cars. You've got to make things work and evolve as you're going. We have, first off, we wanted the chrome trim to wrap all the way around. This just wasn't going to work. Um, just couldn't get it to work at all. So basically, we simplified the idea, and to be fair, I think it looks better for it and a lot simpler and a lot cleaner. Um, so we've got the chrome trim um, running across the bottom there, blacked out the top trim. Um, custom made glass for the back, custom seals. All of this is handmade. Of course, that's the rear section of the C pillar. This front section with this curve there, that's all been custom made, welded in, pieced together to make it look as seamless as possible. The back window, the size of that was dictated by what's going on in the interior, um, the height uh, as well to cover the sunroof motor, um, and also the side of the bed as well. That was, again, all custom made, glass made to fit. Now with a lot of the show cars that we built here, I find it's all in the details. Um, when I build a car, I like people to walk around it and each time they walk around, notice something different. One of the little things on this one is the headlights. We sent these away, had Angel Eye DRLs fitted to each light, um, projector beam headlights, and also inside the lens there, had the Bentley B logo etched into the lens there. Something not a lot of people will notice, but one of those little details that makes all the difference. Right, another one of those small details that makes all the difference. We do a lot here, color-coded calipers. On this one, it's got the Bentley logo raised letters. That was all shaved off, so you can see the Bentley logo there. Drilled groove discs, uh, 21 inch wheels. Now, although a load of work has gone into this car on the rear end, we couldn't do nothing on the front end. So um, a body kit from Serona Design in America was bought and fitted to give the car a more aggressive but factory looking appearance. 
Um, using the standard style mesh there, which all matches in, it just gives the car again, that much more aggressive feel to it and a much more um, deluxe version uh, of the original bumper there. So you can't do that much work on the outside of the car without meaning you've got a load of work done on the inside as well. Um, as the rear seat is not there and the bulkhead has been moved forward, complete new panels have had to be made for the interior. We did all that in-house, had it trimmed in a leather to match the uh, standard tan leather. Rear door cards, they've been all cut down, all the holes in them that we didn't need anymore for things like uh, hell windows, door handles, that sort of thing, all those were filled. Um, rear speakers, we've retained all the rear speakers, all that is standard, all the standard electrics are still in there. Those are refitted, again, retrimmed to match. And the rear center console. This is a two-piece center console and this is standard. The rear section was extended. A little ramp made up there as well to just give it a little bit more of a, a, a profile. Um, to again, make it look like we believe Bentley would have made it. Again, all trimmed in the standard leather. All right, so in the front, to give the car more of a modern feel, uh, centers of the front seats, they were all retrimmed really in a grey Alcantara with this beautiful um, stitch in there. Armrest there and the center of the door cards as well. Also the center of the, the, uh, the steering wheel. And also the name of the car, Decadence, stitched into the back of the seats as well. So we couldn't do that much work to the rest of the car and leave the engine standard. So this one's been tuned up to almost 600 brake horsepower now. Um, intake manifolds were all taken off, fully polished, ceramic coated to seal that in. Um, and all the plastics, hydrated to carbon fiber. Right, now one of the things that can make and break any project, no matter how cool your car is, is the color of it, the stance and the wheels. Now on this one, we've got the 21 inch wheels. Um, one in 22s, but it takes away the drivability a little bit because you've got less profile tire. So these are perfect for this car with the air suspension, still drives perfectly. The paint, we chose an Audi Velvet Purple. Again, being a Bentley, being a Flying Spur, we needed a color that looked custom, but also gave it elegance as well. Um, you couldn't paint a car like this bright pink or silver's too boring, black is too obvious. This is just perfect. It's got a nice little shift to it as well. On the bonnet, we went the Rolls Royce Star with the metallic silver. Um, that is an Aston Martin silver, Aston Martin colors. They've got a real high metallic content in them. It just looks absolutely awesome in the sun. Now, this car, one of the most challenging projects we've had to date. Um, it was a big build. It had a lot of problems along the way that we had to solve. You get that with every car, but being a Bentley, doing this to a car like that is always a risk. But we overcome those problems as we do on every single build. And um, it's one we're definitely proud of. Um, the owner actually named this car Decadence, which is just perfect for it. The badges just go along nicely. So if you like what you've seen in this build, want to keep up to date with all our other projects, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you soon.